Good morning, everybody. Shavua Tov. Everybody should have a great week. This is a Devatwa broadcasted from Mug and David Shul in Los Angeles, brought to you from TorahAnytime.com. This week's parasha is a double parasha, Parasha Tazria Metzora. And the beginning of the parasha speaks about Ishaki Tazria Vialeda Zachar. It talks about a woman who gives birth to a child and the laws um, regarding childbirth, the Torah speaks about it in detail. We have to understand that we're living in a life and in a time that we take everything naturally. Everything we seem is natural. In other words, a man gets married to a woman and in natural ways and causes, you know, a woman gets pregnant and after nine months, if everything works out well, she has a child. But there are many times, people who we know, unfortunately, that it doesn't really work so easy and so simple for them in such a natural way. There are many people who are married for five years, still don't have a child. Ten years, no child. Fifteen years, some people even twenty years, and they still, still did not give birth to a child. And a person who's in such a situation, we can't even imagine the pain the suffering, the hardship that the couple is going through. You know, every time they go to a Brit Mila, for example, you know, they get embarrassed because people always give them brachot and say, soon by you. How many times have they gone through such a situation? I was even once, happened to be next to a friend of mine, and this is after 10 years, still didn't have a child, and you know, he comes to a Brit Mila, and somebody standing next to him says, soon by you. He tells him, he looks in him to the eyes and says, do me a favor. Please don't say that to me ever again. Because after a while, we don't understand how many times people are bothering them, and they, they're going through a very hard time. They're going through many, many breakdowns in their life. They're dying to have a child, and they're just not getting a child. And what happens after 20 years? Suddenly that beautiful day comes. Their wishes, their dreams come true. And then they have a beautiful baby. They have this child that they've been waiting for for so long. And what happens? The time has come. They're so happy. They're so excited. And then all the tefillot, all the prayers suddenly stop. And that's the big mistake. They prayed all this time to have a child for 20 years. And when the prayers were granted, now when the baby's born, all the prayers are stopped suddenly. They got what they wanted. They think the mission is completed. My friends... The mission has just started. Prayers for children. Not only do we pray to have children, but we need to pray when the baby is born. Every single day of our lives, we have to pray for our children to make sure that they go in the right way, in the right path, to be honest, to be brought up with love, with kindness, with chesed, to go in the path of Torah and mitzvot. Because we're living in such a world today with so many temptations that children have we didn't have it in our times. What we had was nothing compared to what's coming out today in technology. Today, we have children in second grade in schools that are having iPhones, iPads. Every, every month, something new is coming out. I'm not sorry, please forgive me if I'm not keeping up with the technology. Second graders, what does a second, third grader need a cell phone for in school? I don't understand. I, been, I went to school without a cell phone. And everything was fine. Nothing was wrong with me. You know, you need to make a phone call. You go to the office and you make a phone call. From 9 to 5, from 9 to 4, whatever time school starts and school ends, a child is in a safe environment. They're in school, they're with teachers, they're protected. The parents come after school, pick up the children. What do I need a second, third grader to have a cell phone? They can start texting their friends at that age. I'm not joking. I teach, I'm a teacher, and I know that kids at that age, they're already texting boys, girls, things that are going on. It's unbelievable. I don't understand these parents. And these parents think, no, it's safe. It's safe for them. They tell me, no, Rabbi, it's a safe thing for my daughter, for my son to have a, to have a cell phone. At second grader, third grader. And then they wonder what happens after a few years. What goes wrong after a few years? How much is it important for us? Tefillot are so important. Every day to make sure our children are safe and they go on the right derech, the right path. Abraham Avinu says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I don't mind not having any children if I know that my children are going to go astray and go in the wrong path. 
Yaakov Avinu says the same thing. Amuta hapam, says Yaakov Avinu. I'm going to die this time. Our hachamim, our sages ask, what do you mean you're going to die this time? How many times do you die? And Yaakov Avinu says, no. Now that I see my son Yosef, and I know all my children are righteous, and they're good people, I'm ready to die. I can leave this world safe and sound, knowing that all my hardship that I had in my life wasn't for nothing. All my hard work bringing up my children wasn't for nothing. Because I know my children are all righteous and they're all good. Every parent wants to make sure that their children goes the right path and the right way. But tefillot are so important. We shouldn't think that once a child is born, everything's done. Every single day we have to pray for our child to make sure they're going the right path, make sure they get the right chiduchim, make sure they go with the right people, the right environment, the right friends. Every single detail needs tefillot, needs prayers. There was a story told over, just to, for we understand how important is Chinuch HaYeladim, education of the children and the Torah path. After the Holocaust was over and Jews were murdered through all over Europe and they were bringing in children who didn't have any parents and were smuggling them over the borders and they brought them into London. And there was many organizations that wanted to save these children and put them in the right families, put them with people for adoption and so on. And there was non-Jewish organizations, there was Jewish organizations, and there were different types of organizations that were helping out. There was one orthodox religious organization in London that made a gathering together to see how many children they can save from Jewish families to put them up in the right families so they could have the same upbringing that they had in Germany, orthodox and religious the way their parents would like them to continue their lives. And they had a problem. The problem was with money. They needed help, serious amount of money to help them out, to build this nice building with a kitchen, with a dorm, everything to put these children in the right place, in the right environment. So they got a gathering together and they were thinking of different names that they can ask. And they remembered there was one lord in London. And they said that this lord was a very rich person. He gives a lot of tzedakah, a lot of help he, he gives to the people. He's very charitable. But the only problem is he's not religious. The only time he comes to synagogue is once a year to say Kaddish for his parents. He has no connection to Judaism. So the rabbi said, Rabbi Abramski, who is the chief rabbi of London, says, no problem, I'll call him up, don't worry. Rabbi Abramski calls up this Lord and he tells him the situation. He says, this is a situation of life and death situation. It's called in Hebrew, Pikuach Nefesh. Every bit of money that you give will be saving children from life and death. So the Lord says to the rabbi, Rabbi, don't teach me what pikuach nefesh is. Don't tell me what's life and death. Life and death means when somebody's in a situation of going to die or not, and they're, either they're going to live or die, you have a mitzvah from the Torah to save them. I know that. But these children already have been saved. They're brought out of the camps. The camps are over. They're now into dry land. They're going to be put in good families. What's the difference if they're put in religious families, non-religious families, Jewish families, non-Jewish families? That's not a matter of life and death. Rabbi Abramsky said, you're making a very big mistake. In the Torah life, life and death situation means and the way a child is educated, that can also be a life and death situation. The Lord said to the rabbi, I am sorry rabbi, but I'm not going to help you. Don't teach me what life and death situation is about. Okay, four days later, on a Friday night, nine o'clock at night, the Lord gets a telephone call. And he picks it up on his, in his private home. And on the other side of the phone says, Hello, this is Rabbi Abramsky speaking. Are you telling me you know more than me what is a life and death situation? It is Friday night, my holy Sabbath. I have never broken the Sabbath in my life. And I'm calling you tonight to let you know that Pikuach Nefesh, a life and death situation, can even break the Sabbath. This is a serious situation. And children who are alive, even, and put them in the right education is a life and death situation. The Lord was shocked and he couldn't believe it. He said to the rabbi, I know how serious you take the Sabbath. How much money do you need? And he told him the amount and Saturday night he came to his house and he wrote him a check. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not take it for granted. Baruch Hashem, Hashem has granted us with children. But let's continue to pray every single day. Let's keep our children in the right environment. Make sure they have the right friends. So they won't go astray and they'll go on the right path. Have a great week. All the best.